In the past, players used to think that melee is the easiest role, but these days the game doesn't really feel easy when you're ping-ponging around the map in a triple caster lobby. And now, after back-to-back -back reworks for a few classes, we decided it's time to update our difficulty tier list based on new data from Drustvar and WoW Arena Logs. What we discovered recently is that on average, melee are actually doing worse than most ranged DPS at two critical benchmarks, Rival and Duelist. As it turns out, if you are 2100 as a melee in solo shuffle, you are in the top 2%. So what are 98% of players doing wrong? Well, we know two things are always true. Players at higher ratings are doing more damage and have more awareness, which both feed into one another. Most players are actually capable of higher ratings if they can check both of these boxes. So to remove all the tears and frustration of being hard stuck, we teach the exact fundamentals that are proven to help players just like you reach their true potential. Our class courses have helped over half a million players learn how to deal rank one level damage. And to increase your awareness, we have a complete UI package fine-tuned for PvP, including custom profiles only available for skill cap members, allowing you to skip hours of wasted time, having the perfect UI for every class with the click of a button. We back everything up with a rank up guarantee, which promises you will gain at least 400 rating while using our service. So if you are ready to reach your true potential, get started with an exclusive discount offer below. Once again, our criteria will be based on skill floors, not skill ceilings, since this is what truly matters for learning a spec. To be considered the easiest melee, a low skill floor means having simple mechanics, which is still the most important, but we also need strong defensives and the ability to stick on target. Ret Paladin pretty much checks every box, since as many of you have pointed out, it's basically a ranged spec more than anything else. While Ret has suffered some mobility problems in the past, it has enough ranged damage to avoid the problem that plagues most melee. The rework to Paladin in the latest patch gave them a bunch of new defensive tech, including the ability to bubble on Forbearance, and with Lay on Hands not being affected by dampening, Ret is super bulky. Even though its damage isn't quite as punchy these days, we think the spec is possibly just a few damage buffs away from being oppressive once more. So with lots of range damage, good defensives, and a linear playstyle, it definitely falls in the easiest tier. But what about rogues? We know this class gets a lot of hate, and fair enough. Rogues are like the Fox McCloud of PvP. When they're strong, it feels like you can't even play the game. But right now, subtlety is just a bit janky to play in solo shuffle. After recent damage nerfs, its damage isn't enough to automatically win, and to truly exceed as a sub-rogue, you need to carve your win condition multiple steps in advance. We don't want to boost the egos of sub-rogues too hard, but it's honestly like playing chess in the middle of a bloodbath. Assassination is a bit more linear, and its role hasn't really changed in a few years. You're still winning the game by keeping up bleeds and using kidney on cooldown. The only difference is that these days it has a bunch of quality of life improvements that make it easier than ever to play, including AoE Garrett's and the rework to Slice and Dice, which eliminates all buff maintenance. Their recent rework also made Outlaw marginally easier, alongside a redesigned crack shot, which makes doing Big Burst more fail-proof than before. Outlaw is still a spec that requires high APM to play, and is still quite difficult to execute for the average player. You have to do a lot more than press W to win as a rogue. Anyway, we still think sub is the hardest melee to play for most players, but now Outlaw is slightly easier, with Assassination continuing to be the easiest rogue spec to play in Solo Shuffle. Of course, Enhancement Shaman has been a hot topic over the past few weeks, and as we recently learned, the spec has the highest win rate across all ratings out of any melee. While Enhanced didn't pick up any defensive tech in the recent rework, it remains one of the tankiest specs in the game into casters thanks to seasoned wins. As long as you're landing kicks, you can get 30% damage reduction all game. While we definitely think Enhance has an easier time winning these days, it's still not the easiest melee to play, as the Shaman class itself is pretty bloated with GCDs. The damage rotation might be simple, sure, but you need a bunch of keybinds to handle every utility commitment. Shamans can also struggle more with mobility compared to other melee, as they have very limited gap closers, and can struggle to impact the game outside cooldown windows. Anyway, despite being one of the best melee in the game, we think Enhancement is still moderately difficult for most players. Feral is another spec that has done insanely well this entire expansion, but remains a bit difficult to play for the average player. Its win rate between Challenger and Rival still isn't great, and is hovering below 50%. With that said, Feral is arguably the best melee at higher ratings, where it definitely avoids all mobility problems. The main problem with the spec is that it can take a ton of damage passively, and if you aren't willing to play evasive with your mobility, you can easily fall behind. 
What makes Feral Druid OP at high ratings is not damage alone, but the fact that the spec is basically like a sub rogue and boomkin combined, needing to constantly ping pong between targets, chaining CC in order to keep up momentum. Definitely not a spec that can press W and win. So while it is strong, Feral isn't as straightforward as compared to other melee and will be going into the medium difficulty tier. Warrior is a contentious subject, because depending on who you ask, warriors either have the best or worst mobility in the game. The experience of most casters, especially at lower ratings, is that warriors are one of the hardest classes to actually get away from, and when they can stay connected, their pressure can feel absurd. At higher ratings, players complain more about Feral Druid mobility, but comparing the two is a bit misleading. It's like comparing a Ferrari to a Mustang. One is faster than the other for sure, but both of them will beat the average boomer sedan. Listen, almost every melee in the game will have mobility issues in some lobbies, but for the most part, when warriors can have uptime, they will have high impact damage, all while being relatively simple mechanically. Despite some defensive issues, we still think Fury is carried by its easy mechanics, and ARMS continues to be a moderately difficult vanilla spec. Moving on, there has been a lot of pessimism surrounding DK in the past few weeks, and for good reason. Both Frost and Unholy are struggling super hard, to the point that even Blood might be more competitive. As we discovered recently, Frost DK is performing just as good, if not better than Unholy at lower ratings, and is even capable of being the number one DK spec on the ladder. Still, the biggest issue with Frost specifically is that it has a very linear playstyle. You're only scary during your big setups, and pretty much a non-threat otherwise. The fix to this problem might be giving the spec some sort of healing reduction effect, which would definitely make it not only more playable, but also easier for all ratings. Unholy, on the other hand, simply faces a numbers issue. It does great AoE damage, but struggles to generate pressure on a single target. When sustained single target damage is consistently high, the spec feels good to play, but right now Unholy just doesn't do much when it can't cleave, all while suffering from some mobility problems and having weak defensives in melee heavy lobbies. It's one of those specs which should be good at lower ratings, but suffers from a snowball effect. Weak single target damage means being less scary, which translates into your opponents being much more aggressive which in turn forces you to play more defensive, resulting in even lower single target damage. We are going to be putting both DK specs in the hard difficulty tier, since both specs are currently experiencing some fundamental problems that gate their success. Demon Hunter is in a similar situation to Unholy DK. It has all the makings of being a good spec on paper, but just suffers some numbers issues. Right now, DH just isn't that threatening. In the past, Demon Hunter had the lowest death rate in the game, but these days it's dying just as much as Survival Hunters. As you definitely know by now, damage is super spiky across the board, and with their passive defensives being nerfed over the years, DH seems to be struggling with the pace of the meta. So now DH has less agency across the board. It can't really dictate the game on offense like it used to, and now gets punished defensively too. With future tuning, we could see DH become easier to play, but right now it seems a bit harder to actually win. Because of this, it will be yet another melee spec landing somewhere around medium difficulty. Windwalker Monk is sort of in the same situation too, but is still one of the tankiest melee in the bracket, having the lowest death rate out of any DPS. The spec has evolved into a sort of micro CC bot, being super disruptive with a wide arsenal of stops, which now include Clash. The main issue with Monk, once again, is simply finishing power. Monks might run around all game being annoying, but can't really end games in the same way as other high tier DPS. With Serenity being pruned from the game, you need to put in a lot more effort to actually close out games. Right now, since the effort to reward ratio is a bit off for the spec, we will be placing it in the medium difficulty tier this patch. That leaves Survival Hunter as our last remaining melee spec. We were actually quite shocked as to how well this spec is performing. It has one of the highest win rates of any melee from challenger to rival. It seems like most players are doing well, but that doesn't mean it's completely free to play. We've said this in the past, but there is a reason why survival continues to be one-tricked. Its design is just so incredibly unique that it's not that intuitive to pick up as an alt for most players, especially when BM seems to do even better with half of the effort required. We asked Big Max what the number one learning curve is for survival, and he responded by telling us that survival is all about balance. You need to manage uptime on the kill target while being able to consistently harpoon trap the healer, and then trying to balance all this without dying as the hunter spec that is most exposed to damage. Survival will once again be one of the hardest melee specs. Remember though, if you can fine tune your damage and increase your awareness, you can climb rating no matter what difficulty. We here at Skillcabs only work alongside some of the best players in the world. We're talking big name streamers, AWC competitors, even BlizzCon champions. All with one goal in mind, to teach you, yes, you, exactly how to play your chosen spec in Arena, no matter what your experience, through an effective improvement plan. 
So if you want to start your own journey to greatness, why not do so with a guarantee that you will gain at least 400 rating? Otherwise, you get your money back, no questions asked. For now, though, that's going to be it for us. See you soon, and good luck in the new season.